portion of the order. Total a net 27 yards rushing against Washington State, the number one defense in the league. California came in as the number two defense in the league, and you rack up over 300 yards running. Well, it clearly was one of the most productive days we've had running in recent years, uh, and we needed it uh, because Cal's defense is very good, and uh, we needed to establish some, some ball control, uh, line of scrimmage control uh, to allow us to do uh, the things that we like to do. And uh, our, our measly attempt at running the ball last week looks a lot better uh, given the fact that I think Arizona only had 40 yards rushing against that same Cougar defense. So the Cougars are for real on defense, and they lost a tough one uh, to Arizona 10 to 7. But uh, we uh, now have another tough one coming up against the Huskies, whose defense is outstanding, and Napoleon Kaufman is the ground game in the Pac-10 this year. He is, he's a great back. We'll talk more about the Huskies in detail later in the program. You didn't uh, have one guy go over 100 yards, but you had two, Ricky Whittle and Dino Filia, and the last time that your team had done that, ironically, had been against California last year. <laughs> right, with uh, Ricky and, and Burwell going over 100 yards. This time we, uh, we shattered the 100-yard mark, though, with Ricky Whittle getting 177 and Dino getting 130. Uh, I, I really was impressed with the play of our offensive line. Uh, a lot of young people in there blocking extremely well. And a, a great job, I thought, by the tailbacks breaking tackles. Because I've talked to them about that, uh, Todd, and we emphasize, you know, you, you are not a great back unless you can break the first tackle. Anybody can run to the first tackle. It's the good backs and great backs who run past the first tackler. For the third consecutive week, your defense has been outstanding. Had uh, the big game against USC, played very well despite the loss to Washington State and came back with a great effort against Cal. Well, I, I think that uh, our, our defensive staff has really done a great job of putting uh, the players in position to make plays. Uh, they have definitely bought into the team concept of defense. Uh, and uh, we're, we're mixing things up a lot more, bringing a little more heat. Uh, we start out with a premise each week to eliminate the opponent's running game. And, and Cal's running game has been very, very good. And uh, it was a key for us, I think, particularly with McGonagall at quarterback, to take that away from him so that he couldn't sit back there and, and pick his time to pass and throw the ball, that we've put them in passing situations, therefore that we could dictate the type of things we wanted to do against the passing game. And we virtually eliminated Cal's running game. And that's, uh, I think about the third week in a row that we've accomplished that. Now, again, uh, looking forward, the task is going to be much more difficult against the Huskies. Yeah, come in with uh, Napoleon Kaufman, uh, maybe the premier Heisman Trophy candidate uh, right now in the country. Let's take a look at the first half highlights as we get right into this thing. Oregon won the toss of the coin, deferred until the second half. And we get ready to go as the Ducks will kick it off to California. Matt Belden. Uh, we uh, mentioned had a groin injury uh, going into this game. He kicked off a couple of times, but then he had to be relieved. Well, he, he hurt it, and it was pain, and you could see that was not up to the standard of his normal kickoffs. We lose contain on the first one, but a uh, nice job by Isaac Walker and uh, Matt Reinhart, whose uh, family came out to see, and his brother Ed was here to see him play in the game as well. First play, Chad Cota, screen pass. Uh, as you know, Cal came out in the second half a year ago, threw the screen to us and uh, took it right through the whole team for a touchdown. And this time, Chad comes up and tackles it for a five-yard loss. Coda played another outstanding football game, as he did last week. So this is uh, Cal's first offensive effort, and nothing there. And so they've got to punt it away. Unfortunately, your first play from scrimmage, a disaster. As the ball comes loose, and California recovers in good field position. Well, you can see Dwayne had the ball. He carried it for a couple steps, and then uh, had a, a hand hit it, knocked it right out, and they get uh, Rich right away. They hit us on a corner route uh, on Isaac. Isaac is pretty good coverage, but a nice throw by McGonagall, and, and uh, Rutherford takes it in for the touchdown. So California capitalizes on the turnover, and they get the first points of the game with the point after by Longwell. It is 7 to nothing. I thought this was the key series in the game, Coach. You came right back, and on a third down and four play, Dino Filia, boy, this is a sensational run. Steps on one of his own guys to break himself free. And then the Amana got loaded on the old shoulders there, and then he ran out of gas. But a great gain, 62 yards, the longest run of the year for Oregon. And that is our first.
play of the day. Well, Todd, he did run out of gas a little bit, but that guy had a pretty good angle on him, too. After looking at the film today, he had a, he had a real good angle on Dino. What we did is line up in, a, in our uh, open formation, split the tight end out here. Normally a passing situation, third and four for us. Uh, we run the draw play to uh, the weak side. Dino just sets here. Danny comes back and hands it off, and we come over, and we get some good blocks downfield, but Dino on the sideline over here makes a great decision and cuts it back to the field, and that's how uh, he was allowed to get that 62-yard run. A great decision on his part off of the draw play that we ran successfully a week ago uh, for a 35-yard gain against Washington State. All right, let's take another look at it. You see the handoff to Dino in the backfield, a little hesitation there, and then he breaks it to the outside, gets a nice block there, by Damron Ricketts, who took out two Cal defenders. And here's the cutback I was speaking of. Sheds a couple tackles, switches the ball back, sheds a tackle right there. And the, and the Cal defensive back really has a pretty good angle on him. And we're going to have to run uh, Dino a little harder in sprints maybe this week in practice. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. <laughs> Great run. It was a big momentum changer after Cal had scored. And a couple of plays later, was Danny throwing uh, to Ricketts, or was he throwing to Josh? Of course he was throwing okay. to Josh. Not so. <laughs> nice reception. The Ducks are within a point of tying it up. You can see uh, pressure. Danny feels it just at the right time. Almost got the ball slapped out. And he flips it out there, and Josh makes a good play on the ball, coming back to the ball for the touchdown. So Belden tacks on the PAT, and it is 7-7 midway through the first quarter. Cal gets the ball back. The first points, I might add, Todd, scored on Cal this year in the first quarter. That's right, they had outscored their opposition until that point. What a great play there by Kenny Wheaton. Uh, intercepted, but out of bounds, unfortunately. So we get it back and go to the air. Cameron Ricketts picks up six on a second down play, then another third and three. Get out of my way whether you're Mark Gregg or their guys or whoever. I'll tell you, Ricky, uh, Ricky is a tough runner. Uh, we uh, hurt the Cal with the option a year ago, and we didn't run it as much this year, but this play obviously was a key one. A nice block by Dwayne Jones out there, and look at Ricky Whittle. They, they're not going to butt him down. They're not going to, uh, they're going to have to wrap him up and take him down. He's a, he's a tough, tough runner. He does like to play against Cal. We'll ask him about that later in the program. We uh, had a little uh, confusion there. Actually, Damron slipped coming off the line. And you can see him, he slips there. And then here comes uh, Pat Johnson. And we end up with two receivers in the same area. But Pat hangs on for a key first down. Next play we see is a second down and 12 from the Cal 20. Screen pass to Ricky Whittle, set up very nicely. Good job by Eric Reed out leading that play. Uh, you can see uh, Ricky Whittle's going to step up inside. You can see him slip just barely out of the screen there to his left. And Eric Reed, number 71, leading the play. He's going to get a block, but we get pinned in on the sideline there and uh, nowhere else to go. So then you're down at the goal line. It's fourth and an inch, maybe. And Ricky dives in. I thought he had gotten in on third down, but they marked it at about the one inch line. He had gotten across, but apparently the ball happened. His head and shoulders did. Nice job there by Dwayne Jones picking up the blitzer. Good job again by Eric Reed. So now you have scored on consecutive possessions, and with the point after, you have the lead. It is 14 to 7. You would never trail the rest of the game. And now it's the defense doing it once again. First down play. Well, not much there. We have already at this point lost Reggie Jordan, and uh, Derek Barnes came in and played extremely well. He missed uh, two to three games with a shoulder injury himself, but uh, really came back and played an outstanding game uh, against Cal. So third down and nine for Cal, the final play we see in the first quarter. McGonagall. Attempting to throw a screen. We had covered the screen, and he throws it downfield, and deflected incomplete. So that is the end of the first quarter. Oregon with the lead, 14 to seven. Into the second quarter we go, a defense dominating this quarter coming up. In fact, the defense will come up with a score in this quarter as we enter the period of play. It's 14-7, Oregon with the lead, moving the football. Looked like you had a couple of opportunities in this quarter to add a 
a field goal or a touchdown here or there, but uh, unable to, to do that. Draw play here again, the same one Dino broke for the uh, long 62-yard run. This time he picks up a nice gain. We stalled several times just as we were getting into scoring territory in the second quarter, and it really disappointed me. We couldn't take advantage of the uh, field position and put a few of them in. Here's, a, here's a, an example. We're first and 10 on the 34-yard line. An excellent pass here by Danny hitting Pat Johnson. The ball's in the air before he came out of his break, and Pat just slept, steps out uh, for the first down. We mishandled the shotgun snap on, on the blitz on a third down takes us out of field goal range. So Cal gets it back, but they're unable to do anything against the Oregon defense. Rutherford, uh, minimal gain. Then uh, Paul Jensen, he right. did knock to the ground and got up. Right in his hands. That could have been a six. <laughs> and Ricky, back to Ricky. Ooh, look at Tossie get Willard out there. I'll tell you, when the toss locks on you, you're in trouble. <laughs> nice run by Ricky Whittle there. Watch uh, Tossi Malapiai, the right guard. I hope we can see it from this ground level. Out leading the play. Right there, hit Willard and knock him on out. And Whittle cuts back underneath him and uh, makes, a, makes a great run here. Almost gets away, but grabbed the jersey and pulled him down. So you're in Cal territory, but on a third and 10, Danny unable to elude the pressure and is dropped for a sack. He disdained the field goal here. It would have been a long one. It would have been very long and would into the wind with Belden's groin. Uh, I didn't want a chance at. Nice job here by Belden. Getting a good bounce. We were in position to handle it, had it bounced forward. And uh, we get him on the seven yard line. Big series here because midway through the quarter, you'd like to stop them and get the ball back and get some more points. Good play by Jeremy Asher. We'll see it from the low angle. It really is a nice play. Uh, got good protection on us here. They've got a receiver open. Bullard, they're tight in. But uh, a great hit by Asher. Knocks him loose from the football, and they rule it incomplete. So on a third and seven, we're going to go back to the goal line. Mark Schmidt breaks through, gets the sack. And obviously, they give him forward progress there, which is a correct call. This, uh, it was close to a safety, but the ball was uh, you can see he's standing on the one right there, and the ball is clearly outside the, the end zone uh, when he's tackled and spun around and thrown into it, but they give him forward progress. And then a punting, snuffed. And we have Salila Malapiai in there, which we normally don't have in the middle of there, and he takes number 14 and just pushes him right back to the punter who only has about 10 yards to work with, and uh, the resulting thing is is that Salila blocks the punt with their personal protector and we get a safety. Of course, safety since uh, the BYU game. Uh, the, the belly Smith. bump. The belly, bump. The belly bump. <laughs> uh, you were unable to capitalize on the free kick, but you do get it back late in the half. Trying to get some points on the board. This one will get called back, but we want to show what happens to the ball. Follow the bouncing ball, Justin. <laughs> what a great play right there by Pat Johnson tipping that out of bounds because the penalty was on us for, for an illegal block in the back and had they recovered it, it would have been their ball. Dino Filia, nice run. You see we're running a stretch play here and he takes it up inside first then breaks outside and uses his speed and makes a decision to cut it up, picks up a nice game. And on third and two, you need the first down. Give it to Ricky Whittle. He bangs forward and gets it. But uh, disaster moments later, second and ten. Uh, you know, here we're thinking, uh, Todd, we're trying to get in position to at least get a field goal attempt, and then we get sacked, turn it over, and now we're concerned. McGonagall's a little confused here, and he's lining up. The, the fullback came up and got him straightened out. Well, the guard made sure something. he did, too. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing back there? A big sack. Your defense did this all day, Coach. Bailed out your offense. You get a turnover, and the defense comes right in there and saves the day. We do, and, and uh, unfortunately, we uh, take this sack away from our defensive players uh, because we elect to take the holding penalty from the spot of the foul, which is back there by the sack, and uh, push them even further back to try to get them uh, away from a field goal situation before the half. And then the final play of the half, McGonagall trying to make something happen, trying to get a big, big play before the half ends, and Sherman and Coda, two safeties. And 
Well, I think Coda let Sherman have it. Well, he knew that he was the subject of this week's player profile, and then, so he deferred to Jeff Sherman. <laughs> and the final play again, it's uh, the, the old Hail Mary, and uh, Mary wasn't home. And Mary was not there. So that ends the half. A good first half of play for Oregon. They've established their ground game. They've dominated defensively, and as a result, they lead at the end of the first 30 minutes, 16 to 7. Into the third quarter we go as we pick up the action. Uh, well, first of all, the halftime activities. Uh, Donald Duck and the Oregon mascot celebrating Donald Duck's 60th birthday. It was uh, good to see the two ducks out there. And now the Oregon Ducks. Ricky Whittle, a little tightrope action here. Up the sideline, away he goes. Just refuses to be tackled. I'll tell you, he's close to just stepping out when he handles this. This is a, a great job of balance on his part. I was almost questioning that he maybe should have let it go out of bounds, but you never know if it's going to go. But he stays in bounds and then just weaves his way and threads his way right up the sideline uh, for a great return, giving us good field position coming out in the second half. Took us from a disastrous situation if he could have, if he would have stepped out of bounds to great field position. Throw the wide screen to a tight end this time, Blake Spence. Came out in an empty formation and put the tight ends out wide. You know, Phil Yaw takes it around the corner before going out of bounds. Unfortunately, the drive stalls, but the special teams do a good job. Belden, he's gotten good at this, uh, putting the ball inside the 10-yard uh, line. A great job there by Chip Daly, the center. You can see him down there trying to catch it. Does a nice job pushing it back, and Jeff Sherman getting a hold of it right there on about the one foot line. This I, I thought was one of our weaker series on defense. We allowed Cal to, to take the ball and move it out of the short end of the field. Although this is a very nice play on the trap play uh, by Salila Malapiai. Who had been injured in the first half, had been carted into the locker room, I, I assume for x-rays. They were negative and he was right back out there. Real close call here. Uh, could have been a fumble, but uh, McGonagall's arm is going forward. You get a good, good angle at it here on the replay. Uh, just an instant sooner, and uh, I, I really don't think he had started his forward motion, but in that situation, the referee is always going to give the benefit to the quarterback on, on a forward pass. Correctly so. Almost a pick by Alex Morgan. They get a first down here. They're inside the 40, but again, now the defense says that's enough going to come after you. Reynard Rutherford is just stuffed on the blitz. We're going to wrap him up right away, but you can see we've got a lot of folks in there. Rich Rule kind of goes over the top. Kenny Wheaton. I'll tell you what, you've got Derek guys Barnes. flying around the ball, though. We've got some green shirts. The gang green is seeming to uh, take effect. Now on offense, we throw a nice pass to uh, Blake Spence, and Whittle takes it outside and gets enough for the first down. A little bit later on, third down and nine. Again, O'Neal looking for the true freshman, Patrick Johnson, and again, he has just enough for the first down. Great timing on this route. This ball is in the air before Pat Johnson makes his break to the sideline, and just as he turns around, there it is, and Pat's experienced enough, even though he's a true freshman, to keep his feet in bounds. And a big run here by Ricky Whittle, and uh, an unusual tackle. An unusual tackle. Uh, uh, tripping the ball carrier is legal. That's the only person that it is legal to uh, trip in football. And uh, this uh, play by the Cal defender actually saved the touchdown because Ricky is gone and he just slide tackles in here and trips him up. And that did save a touchdown. Because moments later, the ball is thrown up. Uh, Josh Wilcox, kind of a jump ball situation. Daryl Miles gets it. Underthrown and uh, intercepted in the end zone. So Cal gets it back. We're near the end of the third quarter. Oregon is leading 16 to 7, and they still cannot establish a running game. Their longest run from scrimmage, I believe, was seven yards. The quarterback scrambled for nine. Uh, this is a nice play by Mark Schmidt, turning the play back inside, and uh, Rich Rule stepping up and making the tackle. And then this is our second play of the day. Defensively, Kenny Wheaton, the tip drill, and he's got it himself, heads down the sideline, a 26-yard return to give Oregon great field position. That's play of the day number two. Well, Todd, I, I just have been really impressed 
uh, with the play of Kenny Wheaton. And uh, this is one of the most spectacular plays I've ever seen uh, by a defensive back. Uh, Kenny's out here in man-to-man -man on this man. He comes in in motion, passing another receiver lined up here. Both of the receivers turn up field. This man trying to pick uh, the Kenny off here, and he comes back out. But Kenny does a nice job staying off, coming over the top, and getting back here and bouncing the ball up. The thing that was impressive is what happened after the play when it was bounced in the air because Kenny Wheaton is falling to the ground as the ball is and he reaches out and snatches it with his fingertips, grabs the ball, puts it in his right hand, catches his balance by putting his left hand on the ground and then starts running down the sideline for a, a, a nice return setting up uh, our final score. Let's look at it again. This is truly a, a remarkable play by Kenny Wheaton. Terrific job uh, on the coverage itself, doing a nice job. Bounces it up in the air. Now you'll see him catch it, one hand in the right, put his left hand down to keep his balance, and away he goes with a convoy. And he takes the ball down to the California 15-yard line. And uh, not many gimmicks in this short drive here. It's right at him. Nice job by Eric Reed and Hulu Malapiai leading that up. And then Dino Filia taking it up inside behind Tassi Malapiai. Fourth and one. You just stay in the field goal to go for the first down, and you get it. And a couple of plays later, it's Filia again behind Tassi into the end zone for the touchdown. The big toss. The big toss. He's a load when he comes around that corner. Here he comes. Here he comes, 73, boom. <laughs> so Dino gets his first touchdown of the day on the ground. The point after is good, and that is the final play that we see of the third quarter. It's 23 to seven into the fourth quarter we go. Oregon leading California 23 to seven. As we pick it up, the defense is uh, continuing its outstanding play. They try the option and Jeremy Asher is not fooled. Tackle for a one-yard loss. Uh, Barnes takes the quarterback. You see uh, Derek Barnes take the quarterback and Asher scrape outside. He takes Rutherford for a one-yard loss, gets help from Coda. Force a punt, unable to move it. Cal gets the ball back. Second down and 10 play. They try to go deep here. Good tandem work here by the corner and the safety. Actually, Kenny Wheaton had slipped and fallen on that play, got back up and got in on the play. Uh, but good pressure here by Derek Barnes coming around, trying to get to McGonagall. And uh, Wheaton jumps back up and gets help from Jeff Sherman breaking up the pass. So third down and 10. All right, a little crossing route. A little, don't think so. Chad Cota playing some great football. So you get it back offensively, trying to run a little time. Dino gets nine there. And Dino gets two, and that's good enough for a first down. A little too much hesitation on Dino's part on that play after running very nicely. And a big uh, mistake here. We catch the ball for a first down, but get stripped loose and give it back to Cal on a fumble. But again, your defense does the job. That was second and 10. This is third and eight. Alex thought he had a pick here. He did. He made a great break on the ball. Couldn't quite hang on. It would have been six if he had been able to hang on. Ricky Whittle takes it outside. Again, nice gain. Picks up the first down, stays in bounds, keeps the clock running. Good job by David Weber coming down. Good job by Eric Reed turning the play to the outside. And Whittle bounces it on out. That play can go inside or outside on the counter, depending on what the guard does who's leading the, the blocks. And Ricky's a little upset there. If he'd have picked up his foot, he just got tripped up by the ankles. He uh, would have had a lot longer run. Nice job following Kulu Malapiai up into the hole. 
That was an eight-play drive, and although you didn't get any points, you took almost five minutes off the clock, so it was a productive drive. Cal gets it back. There's less than three minutes to play. They're down by 16 points. And Derek Allen, almost a sophomore uh, from Vancouver, almost gets a safety. And then almost a pick. Brian Collins made a nice break on the ball. Chad Williams back there defending. And then... Fittingly, the defense makes the final big play of the game. The completion, the strip, and the recovery. Freshman Aaron Jelks knocks him loose from the ball. Great play uh, by a young true freshman linebacker. And another young linebacker, Curtis Moore, got the recovery. Makes the recovery. A redshirt freshman makes the recovery. You can watch uh, Jelks coming across, 45. Big guy for a linebacker. Boom, blows him up, ball comes out. And Curtis Moore is there to recover it. So that does it. Final score, Oregon defeating California 23-7. to Oregon improves to 2-1 and one in conference play. The Cal Bears drop to 2-1. and one. Let's take a look at some of the statistics from the game. First of all, team-wise, domination here in first downs. Only nine for Cal. Rushing, that's a great uh, production, the best in a Pac-10 game for the Ducks in 14 years. You can see total offense over the 400-yard mark and Cal with only 162. Flip the page. Turnovers, you survived despite the four TOs. Penalties, six for 46, most of those in the first half. Good on third down and punting. Uh, certainly a good job by Belden pinning Cal deep a couple of times. Individually, two guys over the 100-yard mark for the first time this season. Phil Yaw, the second time that he has been over the century mark. He had 123 against USC. And defensively, Again, uh, you look at passing first, Danny O'Neill didn't have to throw it much, and so he did have one more touchdown as he increases his career total there. And then defensively, a good balance again, and uh, Kenny Wheaton very active in the secondary. Pac-10 schedule for this week, Washington at Oregon. That'll be a 12.30 start. There are still about 1,500 to 1,700 tickets still available for the game. You better get them early. Monday morning at the Casanova Center, 9 o'clock. Be there. The rest of the schedule for this particular Saturday. Well, Coach, it is always an exciting atmosphere when these two teams get together. It's always hard-hitting, physical, and I would expect nothing less. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a very physical football game. I would just like to uphold uh, our side of this uh, rivalry. Uh, we have not uh, fared very well in recent years, and uh, we need to step up our level of play. So once again, a reminder, the game is at 1230. So get there early. That means the parking lot will be open at 8.30, so four hours before game time. There'll be a host of people with those campers coming from up north. So if you want a spot, get in there early. I can tell you that's for sure. The Ducks and the Huskies on regional television at Autzen Stadium ought to be a great one. Of course, we'll be right back here next week with all the highlights, the player features, and the rest of Oregon football. So for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for the folks that came down here to the, Cass Center, or the uh, stadium club to watch today. 